Hello and welcome to another Oda episode of the Eternal Law. In the last Oda episode, we saw Nobunaga taking the territory of Uumi from the Hattori clan, expanding Oda's domain and giving us new access to the capital. Then, in a sudden naval battle, the Oda fleet destroyed a Hattori attacker, capturing many ships and crew in the process. Then an Iko Iki army suddenly attacked the weakened garrison at Wakasa Castle. General Kiyonori rallied his troops and through the use of strategic placement of archers was able to destroy the Iko force for relatively few casualties. Then General Takayama Muniyori pushed up against the Iko Iki right back to their fortress at Echizen and prepared to assault the walls. A standoff ensued as Takayama began to move his forces to encircle the enemy's castle, ready for a sudden assault. The encirclement was completed on the west and east sides, the plan being to capture the Tenchu before the battle could even begin. Let's see how it goes. There is no reason for us to fear death. Whatever we do today, it will be their end and not ours. Either our great cause shall continue to shine as a beacon of purity to all Japan, or Amitabha will descend and take us from our dying bodies to the new heaven, leaving the odor to rot away as sure as a leaf must fall to the ground and crumble. Brothers in arms, let it be written that we few men today destroyed a great enemy and confirmed in the eye of heaven that Japan is worthy of its blessings. So here we are, the Oda forces are ready to assault the Iko Iki's main stronghold. They've surrounded the castle, Takayama's moving up to give a little encouragement to these men as they begin their assault up the walls. And a similar deal happens here on the east side. Now if you watch the last episode of the Eternal Law with the Takeda, you'll, you'll see I'm doing a very similar strategy to what I did against the Hojo Fortress I showed in that episode. Moving forces up to delay the Iko Iki's main force from being able to respond to my secret assault on the Tenshu. You can see I've already started taking some of the outer layers of the castle because the Iko Iki chose not to defend many of the sections. So some of these sections are being taken with ease. What I'm doing here is I'm capturing gatehouses to allow some of the extra forces outside the castle to come up through the gatehouse rather than having to climb the walls because men do die when you climb the walls because they fall. Uh, the wall isn't exactly the easiest thing to climb in the world. Here you can see I'm climbing up into the inner sanctum where the Tenshu is located with my strike force. The Iko Iki are very slow to respond. By the time they start moving forces back, I've already taken the second tier of the castle. Thus I'm able to completely block their entire force with the exception of three units of Boashigaru from getting towards the inner sanctum. Those three units of Ashigaru are far over on the west side and are being engaged by my other infantry detachment. And here's the strike force itself moving towards the Tenshu, ready to capture it with nothing to stop it at this stage. Here are all the forces I mentioned on the west side. The enemies of Ashigaru are engaging them, but I'm not really attempting to put up a fight. I'm just running away because all I need to do is stall for time at this stage. So I might as well just save as many troops as I can by spreading out and making it hard for those Ashigaru to hit my men. These Yari Samurai reach the Tenshu and begin to capture it. The Iko Iki flag begins to descend, so now it's just a waiting game. All I need is my troops here to continue holding off the Iko Iki forces. And it actually is going really well down here. Uh, the Oda men put up an excellent fight against the Iko Iki Samurai and Ashigaru uh, gathered together here, uh, able to hold them off with relative ease. You can see here many of my Ashigaru are cutting through the enemy Samurai. Very impressive. So after just uh, a few tens of seconds, the Tenshu has been captured, which means the castle is now in the hands of Oda, and the battle automatically ends. We don't have to continue fighting with the rest of the force. They are forced to surrender by this move. This means that Takayama has now captured the central stronghold of the Iko Iki Rebellion as a whole, with almost no casualties. An excellent move for the Oda clan. Back on the strategy map, we can see that we didn't lose any units, we just lost a few troops uh, from some of them. Overall, a very excellent result for the Oda. We've captured a castle and we now have a full strength army to defend it right away. The enemy reinforcements, who we saw being destroyed on the last Oda episode, are killed there and the castle falls to us, and I need to peacefully occupy. Taking the province reveals two more small Iko Iki armies to the north, including an Iko Iki general, so I'll have to watch out and see what they try and do. They'll probably flee the province and come back later with an army to retake it. 
Let's have a look at the province itself. The problem is here, it's 100% supportive of the Iko Iki Rebellion, which means the fact that I've come in with a samurai clan and taken it over is not going to make them happy. This means I'm going to need to leave a huge army here to constantly suppress rebellion until I can gradually convert them out of their Iko Iki ways, which at the moment is very difficult because of the Iki monks around and the presence of Iki Iki generals is always converting the populace to their deviant anti-establishment ways. So now I need to move into the next turn. There are virtues to what these people have done here, that cannot be denied. But they are not of the stock fit to hold such power. Each Iki soldier fights for a reason of his own. There's no unity, no society holding these people together. They seek only to release their discontent through violence, thinly veiled in their religious teachings. But they're so convinced of their righteousness. We must find a way to bring them back to order. So now we're moving into the next turn. A Hattori force moves up through Umi, then a Hattori Metsuke comes over to Owari and executes one of my Metsuke, extremely inconvenient. And then this happens, the force that Nobunaga was chasing in the last Oda episode turns back and challenges Nobunaga to a field battle. We can see the enemy force is mainly consisting of light cavalry and um, the Tana Samurai making up the infantry body with two spear units, one of which is a ninja unit to back up. Well, let's see if Nobunaga can destroy this force. Here we are on the battlefield. There are lots of jovial deer prancing about, but also you can see in the background there's an enemy force to deal with. The enemy have uh, created a fairly symmetrical formation with cavalry on the right and left wings and as a central reserve. The main line being made up of their katana samurai and their yari samurai and yari ninja. Nothing particularly special about their formation. Here's the Oda formation, a bit more complicated. Archers at the front, uh, long yari ashikara on the right flank, yari samurai on the left flank, units, katana samurai, Tricks yari samurai and naganata ashikaru in the center. And with two screens, you just saw their screen set up in front of the formation. I'm going to be using those uh, to my advantage in a moment. So the enemy came into arrow range. My archers fired off a volley but then immediately fell back because the enemy were getting too close to comfort. But you can see here what the screens are doing. The enemy's cavalry charge is completely broken by the fact they have to try and go around the screens. Them having to turn corners completely ruins their momentum. And for light cavalry, their momentum is all they have because they're not very good at fighting in melee. Uh, their main strength is that they can build up a lot of speed before they hit the enemy. Here the enemy's cavalry insist on trying to break through my long yari wall, perhaps because it was the thinnest part of the line. However, these light cavalry are extremely weak against long yari, so they are going to be completely destroyed. Here's some enemy katana samurai try the same thing, you don't have much luck. The main enemy force tries to hit the center, but again, in order to fold around one of the screens, it's forced both to break off its charge and lose momentum, and to bunch up in the way you're seeing here. They've formed a big blob, perfect for me to try and surround. On the left-hand side, I've got a blob of my own to stop them getting any deeper into my lines. On the right-hand side, you can see the enemy is having trouble working out what to do with their reserve units because they can't get them into the fight. Inside the actual blob of fighting, things were going quite well. The enemy had a lot of cavalry engaging with some of my Yari Samurai in here, including the enemy general who is now running back, realizing it's a bad idea. You can see enemies trying to get through the gaps in the screen in the center. They're still having trouble and I've almost completely surrounded their center now. My whole um, left flank folded around their center. All these Yari Samurai who um, earlier in the battle defeated uh, another section of the enemy's light cavalry and are now completely sticking it to the enemy's central units of Katana Samurai and some of the surviving light cavalry who came back in to fight in the center. From this point the battle was already won, effectively. My lord, a glorious victory will soon be yours. Here we can see the enemy general who escaped the crush of that big blob over on the right flank is now caught up by the guys I've circled around to their rear, all these Yali Samurai, who are completely destroying the general's bodyguard. He is in big trouble. He charges back into the safety of the blob of his men. However, the blob is being crushed on all sides by my men just rushing in. There are such close quarters that these men can't even use their spears, but the men with swords are able to cut down the enemies. The enemy's general attempts to escape. Nobunaga comes in from the rear after a big encirclement. And as you heard there at the last second, the enemy's general was destroyed. An absolutely decisive victory 
for Nobunaga's force. He lost almost nothing and destroyed the entire Hattori army with a very nice formation there. So let's head back to the strategy map and see if there's some way for us to capitalize on this very nice victory. Nobunaga! That boy cannot be stopped, my friends. Never can he be defeated. Those Hattori must be crying in agony every night as reports of his great deeds reach their cursed ears. Whereas for we men of Oda, each day is filled with joy and pride to hear of his efforts. I wager we'll have our name engraved at the capital long before I grow too old for sake. What a fine celebration it will thus be. Make sure everyone in the castle knows of this inevitable truth. On the battle results screen we saw that Nobunaga took negligible casualties, perhaps only around 10%, whereas the Hattori army was completely annihilated. So an extremely nice victory for Nobunaga there. The Ikuiki are moving their monks around in our territory, which is always a bit worrying. Meanwhile, the new army which we discovered them having as we captured that territory comes down and starts raiding the farmlands. So we'll have to do something about that in the next turn. Moving into the next turn, it turns out one of my Metsuke's was actually imprisoned um, rather than executed as I thought he'd been. That means I'll get him back in the next turn. But it's still annoying. This um, enemy ninja belongs to the Tsutsui clan to my southwest. He seems to be fairly well trained, specializing in assassination, which is a bit worrying because he's right next to where Nobuhide is based. In response I have to hire more Metsuke in an attempt one day to try and get rid of those ninja, but of course the enemy agents can just um, try and take my Metsuke out of play right away. So I'm in a bit of a pickle here. Eventually I'll be able to get around it if I can get my own ninja in. Before I can do with that, I need to stabilize the provinces where the ninjas are coming from. You can see here, there's a strange Hitori army which is just sitting rather cheekily right in the middle of my territory. Nobunaga approaches them and they decide to go and hide in the forest to the south. You can see here a statue has been erected on the Umi fields. This is in honor of Nobunaga's victory that we just saw because it was such a grand victory that the game decided it deserved a statue, which is very kind of it. Now here's the situation up in the north. The Ikoiki army is sitting around, it's just raided our farmlands and now they're suffering winter attrition because they're too far from their own territory. Plus they are really vulnerable because they're trapped up against that mountain range to their east. So I can take Munayuri's army out of the castle and just push them up against the mountains and they can't really escape. So now I'm going to be able to completely demolish their force and I have such an advantage I'm going to be auto resolving this fight. Let's see how the computer thinks it goes. Because I have a level 3 general, the computer will be very favourable uh, to my side. And we can see I take almost no casualties at all in destroying the whole army, which is perhaps unrealistic. But yes, um, higher level generals automatically get favourable results in auto-resolve uh, encounters in this game. So the fact that the enemy general was only level 1 and Minayuri is level 3 gives me a distinct advantage, almost regardless of what the troop makeup actually was. So back down on Nobunaga's front, I decided to push him a bit closer to the Hitori territory to my south because they're basically going to keep raiding from that territory until I take it myself. I moved into the forest where the enemy stragglers were still hiding and Nobunaga's army quickly destroys them in an auto resolve again. Almost no casualties. Nobunaga's getting more and more experience with these little victories so this is very good for him. He'll soon be at level 3. So now I'm in within striking distance of the Hitori castle hidden in the mountains here. However I decided not to attack this turn because I couldn't quite get there. I had but, um, just not enough movement points, so I'm going to have to attack in the spring uh, of next turn, which will also be better for the men because they won't have to suffer any winter attrition on the way. Back up in Echizen, I decided to destroy the Ikoiki Sword School so I can make way for building a Buddhist temple there. This will help me convert them back uh, from the Ikoiki sect to traditional Shinto Buddhism so they'll be less rebellious in the future. Now as we move into the next turn we can see that enemy agents are flowing into my territory from the west and this is going to prove to be more and more annoying as time goes on because those agents are just going to cause nothing but trouble. The enemy, or the enemies around me seem very willing to use their agents rather than their armies to try and bring me down. We see there the, um, the Tsutsui ninja was trying to sabotage the troops stationed at Owari. Luckily it wouldn't have mattered even if he'd succeeded because I wasn't planning on moving those troops anywhere. But still the fact he's constantly trying is annoying. So you saw last time I recruited the Metsuke, and now the Metsuke is ready to take on a mission. I'm checking the possibilities, and the mission that's most successful, and most likely to be successful, sorry, is to try and arrest the Tsutsui ninja. So I sent him down, 
However, the apprehension fails, which means my Metsuke is now vulnerable to any counterattacks that ninja or the local enemy Metsuke are willing to do. You can see there's a Tokugawa Metsuke as, as there as well, who was trying to um, arrest the Hitori Metsuke. However, I think he failed as well. Oh, and another apprehension fails when I bring a Metsuke out of the castle. He was the Metsuke who had just been released from prison after he was imprisoned uh, a couple of turns ago. You can see the Hattori have fielded a few forces in front of their mountain fortress there. Not enough to stop Nobunaga. I do not and ent entering the diplomacy me, panel because I wanted to see whether the Shogunate was willing to declare peace with the Oda clan. Because the Shogunate contest. only really went to war with me because they wanted to support the Hattori clan because for some reason they had fostered an alliance. But now the Hattori clan seems to be on the verge of destruction, I thought maybe they'd be willing to stop the war. But it turns out they weren't. So I'm going to have to remain at war with the Shogunate forces. Now I wanted to build that Buddhist temple I mentioned, but it turns out I don't have the technology required. Apparently you need to have mastered Zen before you can actually build Buddhist temples. So I switched my mastery of the arts Where to focus on getting Zen down. The shadow. There dwells the ninja. Saboteurs and assassins. Happy to do their law's bidding. As you can see, I've recruited my very first ninja as well. Perhaps there is an element of shame to it, using my skills to aid the men who conquered my home. Those of my clan who wish to stand against the Oda do not stand today, nor do they breathe. But I cannot feel shame in living the life of a professional. Besides, in this time of great war, there isn't a lord in the land unwilling to give up their wealth for my keen eyes, swift step, and deadly arm. The age of the ninja has come once again, just as it must in accordance with the eternal law. So now Nobunaga has the opportunity to displace the small Hattori force which they stationed outside their fortress. However, it can't retreat far enough away to be not involved in any siege battles occurring at the castle, which is unfortunate. To make up for this, I'm deciding to move down the garrison from Uumi to support Nobunaga's assault on the castle so that we can minimize our casualties on the way in. This army you can see includes Kisho trained battlefield ninja at an extremely high level supplied by the ninja clans. So I'm looking forward to finding an opportunity to actually using those guys on the battlefield. This was a potential opportunity right here. I could have uh, showed you this fight but I thought it'd be very similar to some of the seed battles I've actually shown you in this and the previous episode. So I decided I wouldn't bother fighting this battle even though it was potentially worthwhile to minimize the casualties and just went forward with another auto resolve. So we'll see how the game thinks I'm doing. Nobunaga's only level 2 general so it's not going to give me the most favorable results. We took okay casualties, still plenty of men left to garrison the castle and of course over the next turn while they garrison it they'll probably restore most of the troops they actually lost by recruiting from the local people. So it was acceptable even with the auto resolve and Nobunaga in fact reaches level 3 as a result of this victory so it is very useful. We now have two level 3 generals in our army, We're going to be able to dominate forces both on the north and south sides of our empire. Now after capturing this we gain national renown. Basically, Oda as a clan has become very famous across the whole nation because of its increasing size and power. We're still, I believe, not the most powerful clan. I think we're the second most powerful clan in the land at this stage. But still, we're getting more and more famous and the Shogun is getting more and more annoyed about the fact that we do appear to be trying to take over the country. It's becoming pretty awkward for us trying to cover up that fact. I move the reinforcements for Nobunaga's army up to the castle to help garrison it. This will increase the amount of public order um, in the castle because they're not going to be too happy at first. I believe this is the Hattori's home province so they're going to be extra annoyed that the Hattori no longer administer the area. Now after this, I thought the Hattori are probably going to be willing to sue for peace with me. So want? I entered into negotiations with them, Speak. offered if them a peace treaty, I tongue. offered them vassalship to the Oda clan and I offered them trade, a pretty kind deal from me. So let's see whether they're going to be willing to actually take that on. And they were. A proposal as trade and true as an arrow's shaft. My lord will accept. May good fortune favor us all. This is also useful for, to me because the Hattori's remaining province Greetings. is quite awkward to access from the current positions of my armies. So it would have been annoying to go and finish them off myself. So that was part of the motivation of me wanting to actually just bring them in into the clan as vassals rather than taking over their territory directly. 
So now what I'm doing is I'm taking Kiyonori's force, which has had plenty of time to rest up up at Wakasa province, and I'm moving it up to the front uh, with the Iko Iki. My idea is that I'm going to replace Takayama with him, because Takayama is more of a, a battlefield general. I don't want him administering the province and leave Kiyonori to actually hold down any rebellions the Iko Iki try and uh, bring up in the Echizen. You can see I'm also starting to level up um, both Takayama and Nobunaga because as they both reached level 3 I forgot to apply their personal skill points. I gave them both very similar lines up uh, focusing on poetry, cavalry command, sneakiness and in Takayama's case I also gave him some warrior ability. So now we're moving into the next turn. The Tokugawa are moving troops around and suddenly this happens. The Tokugawa declare war on the Imagawa. This is a big issue for me because both of these clans are my vassals, so my vassals are now squabbling with each other, and I have no choice but to take a side. I'm not allowed to abandon them both or remain on both of their sides. I have to pick one of them that I want to side with. Now, the logical choice for me is the Tokugawa because they're both politically and militarily stronger, and they're in a more geographically convenient location with regard to the Oda clan, so I decided to side with them indeed. Now the Sutsui are sending a monk into my territory, and the monk is able to convert one of my Metsuke. We saw a flash there of Sutsui troops moving through the forest, and then they disappeared. I'm not sure what they're up to. Then an Ashikaga Shogunate monk moves up to Okasa and converts another one of my Metsuke. The Imagawa appear to defeat the Tokugawa in a naval battle there. I don't really know the details of that, though. As we move into the turn, we start getting reports. More ninja are attempting to sabotage the forces of Owari. We get two messages saying that indeed my Metsuke have been converted. And then I get an offer from some of the former Hattori ninja, saying that if I pay them uh, well, enough money, they will be advisors to my current set of ninja and enable them to have um, higher probabilities of success in all missions taking place over the next two years. So I decided to agree to this because I'm actually planning on using my ninja right now. Here is the first ninja I've recruited. His name is Sune Tane, and I'm going to be leveling him up in the same way you level up your generals. Um, to be a specialist in assassination, because at the moment there are many enemy agents walking about in Oda territory who really could use being assassinated. So I give his um, skill points into assassination and into spying, and then I start sending him east towards Awari, where we can see there are various Sitsui agents sitting around. First I attempt to apprehend the ninja with the local Metsuke, and it succeeds, he was sent to prison. So this means that ninja will next turn respawn back in the Sutsui homelands. This basically gives me one to two, possibly even three turns of freedom from any um, actions that ninja will take. So not the best result, but still very useful. Now the ninja's coming down the road to deal with the Sutsui monk who is sitting around. This is the monk who just converted my Metsuke. So it's time to take revenge. Let's see how my ninja does in this animation. For some reason the monk appears to have a camp set around him, so the ninja must first sneak through the camp, and then he finds the monk, so let's see if he can find a way to take him out. Looks like he's done it. So the monk is poisoned by the ninja's very sneaky move from up in that tree. And that means the monk has been removed from the picture permanently. And the ninja has received experience as a result of successfully completing a mission. So once I do enough of those, he'll level up and get even better in the future. Dishonorable and detestable, that's all those ninja are. But I can see the advantage of having the right man killed at the right time. Lord Nobunaga will keep them in line, I'm sure. They will surely be rewarded when he is made Shogun. Perhaps it will even be he who orders them to kill off that oaf, Nobuhide. I need no more than the few meetings I've had with him to see he is delusional. If this war is to end, it shall be Nobunaga who does it. And then, the Toyotomi name shall be known throughout the land. So now we're moving into the next term, it's autumn of 1551. We saw that the garrison at Wakaso has been demoralized by uh, one of the Ashikaga Shogunate monks. Luckily this doesn't really matter because they're not going to take part in any battles in the near future. So here's that Sutsui army 
which we saw for a very brief moment in the past moving through the forests. I'm able to see it now because I recruited a ninja in the area and the ninja found out about the army camping there. The enemy army itself was full of ninja. You can see I'm deciding to actually try and weaken the army using the ninja by coming in and having him try to assassinate one of the two enemy generals who was amongst the army. So now we get another ninja action animation. Let's see how a ninja does in infiltrating their camp and taking this guy out. That wasn't the guy by the way. <laughs> First he takes out one of the guards and now once he's inside the camp he will go on to try and find the general he needs to assassinate. Oh god, <laughs> he really missed time that jump and now he's been discovered. So now he needs to try and get out of the camp without all these guards taking him out. Luckily it seems my ninja had a whole bunch of caltrops that he was able to throw behind him, take out all his pursuers and he escapes. So the mission failed, however my ninja remains alive and has escaped unscathed. And now we see in this animation what should have happened just now. This is the same animation in its success version. The ninja should jump down from the tree and just kill the guy. I don't know why my guy down there in Iga province failed to do that. This was me assassinating the Ashikaga shogunate monk who had been demoralizing my troops. Um, again that's Sunu Tane, my first ninja, doing the good work. So now I need to think of something to do about this enormous Tsutsui army. It's uh, rather large, it's rather heavy, and like one of the previous Hattori armies I've seen, relies very heavily on having a huge ninja base. The fact that it's positioned in a forest means it's almost impossible for me to take them, because attacking an army consisting mainly of ninja whilst it's hidden in a forest is going to present so many opportunities for my guys to get completely annihilated from all sides that I wasn't willing to leave the castle. However, what I did notice is that I'm one turn's march away from the Tsutsui capital, so what I can do is turn this opportunity into a bait and switch situation. First I exempt uh, the people of Iga from tax. This means they're actually going to have some loyalty to the Oda clan whilst Nobunaga leaves. And then Nobunaga takes the entire garrison out of the city, marches all the, all the way around the Tsutsui forces hidden in the forest and attacks their capital. Now my hope is that if I take this capital, the Tsutsui force will just disband and I'll be able to continue as if they'd never existed. Very cheeky and we're going to have to see what happens to that next time on the Oda episode of the Eternal Law. This week we'll be back with the Takata seeing how they're getting double teamed by both the Hojo and the Tokugawa next time on the Eternal Law.